Hello and welcome. My name is Javier Rivera and today in our DTS series, we are going to be taking apart a printhead. So I'm going to teach you guys how to grab the 8550 um, and pretty much it's for informational. What I want you guys to see is what areas get clogged. So I see that um, a lot of uh, my followers, there's been a lot of messages, people on my DTF group, that you always fight in those clogs and fight in those clogs. Maintenance is the key. So I want to teach you guys um, pretty much how these things are made on the inside. That way you can actually see um, where these clogs are coming from and how to prevent them, okay? Um, I can tell you that I have taken these apart. Um, there's a couple of things on the video. I'm going to show you the seal. Um, I have done it both ways. I haven't ever saw it to leak. I don't think, I don't think it's crucial. The pretty much, um, and it's pretty much this, this little seal. Um, if you put it this way or that way, the key on it is pretty much that your holes where the ink is going through that they line up. Um, so you'll see it on the video. I'll do it on a way. I think it's actually backwards, but really I, I've done it both ways. They have never leaked. I never had an issue. Um, but what is one thing I do got to say is when you have these clogs inside a printhead, it's really hard to fix them. Um, it's really hard to get the, the, the ink to flow again. So there's a couple of things that, um, I'm going to show you pretty much on how to remove it. Where is it at? Okay. So without further ado, let's go ahead. Let's get started. All right, so now that we got the print head out, um, let's go ahead and show you guys how to take it apart. Now, this one, you're gonna see it that it's pretty clean, but <clears throat> I've been fighting with this print head for, for quite some time. Um, uh, this will be day two. And I pretty much got tired and we're just gonna go ahead and risk it. Um, but then at the same time, I just wanna show you guys. So, um, so you're gonna see that it's pretty clean. Um, everything looks pretty clean, but, um, you know, that's because I've been, I've been cleaning it, you know, I've been fighting with it. Um, so this is how you're going to take it apart, right? So the first thing that we're going to do, um, <clears throat> is we're going to remove these rubber grommets. Okay. So we're just going to remove them. Now, when you install them, you're going to see that it has like a little ceiling lip right there. You see it like a little, like a little mountain right there. If you see it, that it's like a channel, that's the bottom channel goes to the bottom, the little mountain, the little seal goes to the top. And it don't matter if you put it this way or that way, okay, it's, it's the same on both sides. But we're going to go ahead and just remove all these. Now, these are, uh, they come out pretty clean, but some of them still have, have a little bit, I gotta clean them. But um, yours might be a little stuck because of all the DTF, you know, and all that stuff. So, so now that we got those out, now we're gonna turn the print head upside down. <clears throat> all right. And now we are going to remove these four Phillips screws, okay. Very carefully. All right, so now that we removed that, we're going to be removing the metal cover that goes around the printhead, okay? And now that we remove that cover, we are going to lift this part. Now, the easiest way to do it is going right here on the side. I'm gonna grab a little pick that I have, and you have to be very careful. You wanna be, because you have four posts in here, um, sometimes they could get filled with sealant and you're going to see what I mean in a second. So, and you're just going to try to pry it. This one, actually, this one's pretty loose. So this one's going to come out. Oh, this one came out pretty, this one came out pretty easy. Okay. So now that we remove that, you're going to see the channels. Okay. And, um, this one I've been fighting, so it's actually pretty clean. I will show you guys a pretty clogged one in a second. Um, one thing to note, there's always a number. This one says number two, the number is going to be outside or the other way to best tell is these got like a little bump up, like little mountains. That's going to be up. Okay. Make sure that you follow through with your channels. So if you look, you know, you have four channels here and then two here. Okay. So you want to make sure that, that you follow through with that. So we're going to remove this. And what I was talking about the sealant, um, I don't know if you can tell if it'll zoom in or not, but you see that gray stuff right there? That is the sealant that goes in between that. See that gray stuff right there? That is the sealant that goes between the metal plate and the, you know, and the plastic and everything. And it seals right here. Um, I never removed that because um, 
you might you might have leaks later. Um, if you apply heat, you might be able to you know get them out. But again, I never I never done that. Um, it, it just I don't think I'll be able to get it to seal properly after removing it. So I have never done it. But if you apply enough heat, this part you know will come out. And what happens is that that seal and sometimes. As you can see right here around the, these posts, I don't know if you can uh, right there. So around these posts, you know that ceiling will will you know will get in there. And if you're prying and it doesn't come out, be very careful. Apply a little bit of heat, not a lot, but enough to just you know that you can lift it out. If not, um, I'll show you one in just one second. So this one is not for an ET. This one's for an XP. Um, so you'll see it's, it's pretty much the same. The only difference, you know, there's a couple of difference on the plugs and stuff like that, but I removed the, the screws of this one, removed everything. And this one was pretty tight. I didn't apply heat. So I, I, I broke this one, you know, um, but I just want to show you, um, what a clock, you know, how a clock looks like. So if you see this one, um, you will see that, you know, how the post, see how the post broke because they are pretty much you know, in there. The XP, be careful. Um, this one, um, this video is for the ET, but if, you, if you're watching this and you have um, and you have an XP, please be super careful. I'm telling you right now, they put a lot of sealant on it. Um, you might break them off. And if you break the post, as you can see here, you know, these posts are broken right here. You won't be able to, you know, put the four screws with a metal plate again. So pretty much that, that print head's shot. But what I wanted to show you guys is where the clogs are happening because, see, all the time people think that, you know, the clog is happening here, you know. If the clog is here, when you do your shoe shine and all that, it will come out, okay. Um, you know, you do your shoe shine, a little bit of, a little wet, and that's it with a little, you know, damp towel. Now, a lot of the codes is because you get water in here. Okay, so this one right now, you know, I, I can't install it like that. All that, all that liquid on all those contacts, I will get a code. I will get one of those dead codes. Okay, but if you if you take a closer look, this one was clogged too, um, right there. See that little hole with that white man? That's I mean, I cannot even pick. There you go. It's coming out, and 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 if you see how it's coming out, that was my clog. Okay, and then if you look right here. That's where it clogs, right there. Now, in, if you look at in here, um, and yeah, this is this is pretty nasty, um, <clears throat> you know. So in here, on on top of your mesh, you know, you can clean that. You know, you can clean that pretty well, no problem, right? This part right here, this looks nasty, but if I throw it on the on the ultrasonic, it'll clean it out. Now. The problem is, how do you clean something that is inside of it? And that's the problem, guys. So the clogs that you're fighting are not clogs that are external. You know, these these clogs are internal in, inside the printer itself. Um, let me go ahead. Sorry. So, so pretty much, you know, if it's here, cool. You can recuperate that. If it's here, you can recuperate that. But if your clog is actually in that channel in the middle, that's gonna that's gonna be rough to take out. I'm telling you right now, it'll be a battle. So that's why maintenance is super, super, super important. Okay. So this one, I'm gonna throw it on the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, you know, I, I don't see any clog in here. I don't see any clog on this on these channels too, like this little holes. Um, so I'm gonna put it on the ultrasonic cleaner and see where it goes. Now the reason why I'll put it on the ultrasonic cleaner, I'll take it apart. I will not put it all in one piece on the ultrasonic cleaner because then I won't be able to dry this out and I need this dry. Um, if these contacts and all this stuff is wet, you will get a death code. You'll blow on a, I mean, fuse, okay? So let's go ahead um, and I got the ultrasonic ready. So let's go ahead and, and start putting all the parts in there. All right, guys, so let's start assembling it. Um, so we're gonna grab this print head, okay? And it's, it's gonna be pretty self-explanatory because you're gonna have four channels on top, two on the bottom, um, so you know exactly where everything goes, okay? Um, you know, like I said, number to the outside, okay? The little, little, little mountains to the out, you know, the little seal um, bump outs to the outside, okay? Make sure that it's there on the, on the two little retaining pins. All right, and now we're set. And now again, four channels and two channels, four channels and two channels, okay? We are going to 
put these two together. There we go. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the metal plate, you're going to see that um, one side has the two um, alignment holes really close together and the other one is apart. So it only goes one way. Okay. Right there. All right. And now literally as you, we just put the Phillips screw heads, tighten them up. Now I always like to go reverse until I feel the thread grab. It's a bad habit that I got, that way I'll make sure it's not cross-threaded. All right, so now we're just gonna put the seals. We're just gonna put the seals back. And you see why I put it on the oven because literally um, everything is dry. I'll make sure that there's no water or anything that can short out the main board, okay? So now we're just gonna grab these and like I said, um, little seal to the, to the top. All right, and there it is. So that print head is ready to be installed on the back on the printer. Um, then we got to purge the lines to get the airs out of the line. And then um, we're ready to start doing print head cleanings and um, see what we got. So there you have it, guys. So again, this was for informational purposes alone, okay? I don't want you guys opening these print heads. They are not, they're not that easy or straightforward to, to get them to work. Um, you know, and once you start opening the seal, you can put it either way. It really don't matter. It won't leak. Um, but it, I, I, once you do that, you have air inside the print head, you're going to be spending a lot of ink trying to get that air out. Um, on top of that, not all the time you're able to get rid of this. <clears throat> so, as you guys can see here, you know, that print head, that, that's clogged. Again, again, this is, I want this to look this bad because I've been throwing this and the meshes are gone. I wanted it to see also the inside, so I removed the meshes. Um, but what, I, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to find a solution that will melt that rubber. And, and, and to be honest, um, I haven't found anything, um, not even lacquer thinner. I mean, any type of graffiti, paint remover, anything like that. I've been dipping that print head. It's, it's a bad print head. Um, and, and nothing is getting rid of that. Now, the XP1500, I don't recommend even attempting it on the XP. And the reason why is Epson knows that that print head is super accessible and really easy to remove. So they put a lot of that sealing on the middle. Also, I don't recommend removing the plastic piece that has the metal. <clears throat> you could probably, um, you know, apply heat and remove it. I, I really don't recommend because then I don't know how you're going to be able to seal that properly and not get ink um, to just leak out. So this is as far as I remove them. Now the XP1500, I've never been able to, to successfully remove it. It always breaks the post. Now the XP, um, that's the XP. The, the ET8550, um, I think because there's so many covers and so many things in there that, that Epson doesn't really seal it that well. They only seal um, very well this part. So that one you can open up. The problem is once you get air in here, you're gonna be spending a lot of ink um, trying to get that air out. You're gonna be, this. it's just gonna be a pain. Um, you're gonna get ink all over these, the, 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 the actual board. Um, and, and if you don't get this dry before you install it, you're gonna burn your main fuse. So I don't recommend this. this I did this so you guys can see the, where the clogs are and what you're fighting. Again, clog in here, clean it, you're good. Clog in the meshes, clean it, you're good. If you have a clog in the middle of that print head, man, to, to get to get that, it's, it's it's too much of a pain at that point. It's better to just replace the print head. Um, you're gonna be you're gonna be on an upwards battle. So if you're missing a few lines, a few dots, fight it because it's 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 external. Okay, if you're missing all your lines, I'm pretty confident that 90% of the time it's going to be inside the printhead. Um, and at that point, to be honest, I don't see it worth um, trying to open the printhead. If you want to do it so you can learn, you might, might as well. Again, XP, 
I won't even try it. it, it you're going to break it in pieces. Um, the ET, you'll be able to, to open it up and see it internally. Okay. So once again, this is for informational only. I don't think um, if you have a clog inside, even opening the printhead, I don't think you're going to be able to save it. But I just wanted to show you guys why maintenance is so important and why we have to keep maintaining these things. So once again, thank you so much for watching my videos. If you like it, go ahead and, and give me a subscribe. Don't, don't forget to um, go into my um, DTF group. That's what we're doing right now to try to help each other. It's it's super hard for me right now, guys. So don't if you send me a private IM, it's gonna take me weeks for me to get back to you. Um, same same with the with the comments. If you leave me a comment, I'm gonna try my best to respond it. But there's a lot, a lot, a lot of people having issues with these printers, and I'm trying to help as many as possible. Um, it's getting a little overwhelming. So let's go. If you have any questions, go to my group, post it out. Um, I have a, a, a solid team right now. The, these guys are amazing. Um, and we're just pretty much on that group helping each other. So thank you to all my moderators. Thank you for all the admins that help me on that group all the time. And thank you, thank you for every member that it's always answering a question. So I really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. See you again on the next one.